Have you ever had a patient who crashes on the ventilator? This can be a very scary scenario. There are many possibilities that can be happening with this patient. Well, today, I'm going to give you a very straightforward algorithmic approach that will get at almost every type of problem your patient could be having. And for that, we're going to need a mnemonic. Hang on. This is a mnemonic that you are going to remember every time you have a patient who is crashing on the ventilator. Dopes, then dots. And we're going to go through all of this. So let's start off with dopes. Dopes is going to help you to diagnose the problem. You have to know what is at play before you can go ahead and correct the problem. And this is the mnemonic, D-O-P-E-S. Now you may have heard of the dope mnemonic, D-O-P-E, before, but there's an extra S in there. And that is something very special that we'll talk about in one moment. The first letter is D, and it stands for a displaced endotracheal tube or a displaced ET tube cuff. You have to consider whether or not that tube has migrated above the cords and whether or not that's the reason why your patient is crashing. They're not getting oxygenated. They're not getting ventilated very well. O is to consider whether or not there is an obstruction within the lumen of the tube. Could it be that the person is having a mucus plug that's within the tube? Could it be that the person doesn't have good analgesia and sedation and perhaps they are awake and alert and biting on the tube? Perhaps the tube has somehow kinked and now air flow is not getting in. This is how obstruction could be part of the problem. P stands for pneumothorax. Could this person have developed a pneumothorax, their central lines going in? Maybe that caused a pneumothorax. Just positive pressure alone can cause barotrauma and lead the person to have a pneumothorax. E is for equipment. Don't forget, the ventilator and the tubing is not perfect. There are problems with the system. So what you want to do is Take that endotracheal tube and follow the tubes all the way back to the ventilator and consider that the ventilator itself might be malfunctioning. Sometimes when you've gone through the entire checklist, you have to swap out the vent just to eliminate that problem from the entire equation. And the last thing to consider is whether or not there is breath stacking that is happening. If you have a patient who has asthma or COPD or their respiratory rate's too fast, you have to consider that the person is having breath stacking or dynamic hyperinflation or auto peep. Auto peep. That reminds me, crit bits number one, which is linked up here, is where you want to go if you don't know the concept of auto peep. Once you've gone through the differential of what the cause of the problems can be, it's time to go through and fix the problem. And for that, we're going to use the mnemonic dots. Now it's very important. Even if you figure out what the problem is on one of the initial steps, go through to the end of the algorithm. This is gonna be a really good check on your system to make sure everything is A-OK. -okay. The first thing you wanna do is disconnect the patient from the ventilator, get your ear down to the endotracheal tube, and see if you can hear a high-pitched squeal. This might indicate that the person was having air trapping or dynamic hyperinflation. And hearing this sound might indicate that this person was air trapping. Additionally, you can add pressure to the anterior chest five to 10 seconds just to decompress those lungs, just to take that out of the equation. Don't stop there. You're not done. You got to go ahead. Get the patient on 100% and start bagging that patient. As you bag that patient, you're going to be learning a lot about their lungs. If they're too easy to bag, then you start to think that maybe that tube has dislodged. Maybe it's migrated above the cords and that endotracheal balloon is not creating a good seal. If the patient's hard to bag, then maybe that person developed a pneumothorax. Maybe there's a mucus plug distally. Maybe they're main stemmed. Whatever it is, the compliance of the chest is very low and you're having trouble bagging, that should indicate to you that there is a problem. One more thing that you might want to do is as you're bagging them, go ahead and feel that pilot balloon just to make sure that it's fully inflated. If it's deflated, then you think about a leak in the system and maybe that endotracheal tube has a leak in it and that's why it's not creating a tight seal in the trachea. After that, you want to ensure that the tube is patent. Again, this could be a mucus plug, it could be a kink, it could be the patient biting down the tube. So you want to take the inline suction catheter, if you have it available, and pass it down the endotracheal tube to make sure it's nice and smooth. If you don't have one available, then maybe it's time to take a bougie and make sure that you can clearly pass that bougie down the tube. Don't go too far because you can injure the trachea if you're not careful. But you want to make sure that that tube is completely patent when you pass something down. And then don't forget, if there's any question about the tube patency or how the tube is working, 
don't hesitate to give that patient more paralytic and go take a look whether you're using video laryngoscopy or direct laryngoscopy. You got to get eyeballs on the distal part of that tube just to make sure it's well seated and everything is working well. If breath sacking is at play, well then you know you're going to have to tweak the vent. Of course, you watch Creepbits episode number two from season one, where it described how you manage patients who have dynamic hyperinflation. Remember, there's three things you need to do. I'll review them here just in case you didn't watch the video. Remember, those patients who have dynamic hyperinflation from asthma or COPD, they need more time in expiration. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decrease our respiratory rate. Decreasing respiratory rate gives more time for expiration. The next thing we're going to do is decrease our inspiratory time. The quicker we get that breath in, the more time there is for expiration. And finally, we can decrease our tidal volume volume by 1 cc per kg because the less air we put into the patient, the easier it is for them to get air out. If any of this is too quick, go back to Critbits episode number two where we describe how you manage the patient who's having auto pee. And the last thing that you want to do is get out your trusty friend, the ultrasound, and take a look at the patient's lungs. Because I don't know where you work, but even the fastest stat chest x-ray still takes too long to get to the bedside. And when you use ultrasound, you can figure out many things, like whether or not the patient has a pneumothorax, whether or not the person has developed an acute pleural effusion, whether or not the person had a main stem intubation or the tube somehow migrated down to the right main stem, or whether or not there's a big mucus plug there. All of these things you can figure out just by using ultrasound at the bedside. It's fast, it's easy, non-invasive. I hope I don't have to explain to you how much I love ultrasound and how much you should love ultrasound too. So don't forget this mnemonic, dopes then dots. Dopes is going to help you to diagnose the problem. And dots is going to help you to fix that problem. And please don't forget, Go through all 10 steps of this algorithm, first dopes and then dots in sequence, because even if you find the problem early on, you want to make sure there's not a secondary problem and make sure that nothing else was missed. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, why don't you go ahead and give us a like. And if you want to see more of these videos, please don't forget to smash that subscribe bell so you never miss any of our content. And if you feel like it, why don't you leave a comment below about how you manage the patient who's crashing on the ventilator. Thanks for watching.